the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka's government projects on the back burner finally see a chance for completion with concluded debt restructuring talks. Indo-Sri Lankan trade ties see a boost as Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar meets President Ranil Vikramasinghe. The Colombo Stock Exchange puts an end to the red sessions past as the market ends the week with gains. And global brand 99X sees top international leadership gather in Colombo for strategic exchange. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Nile Business Report. Cabinet spokesperson and Minister Bandula Gunawardena said discussions on restructuring bilateral debt has concluded and Sri Lanka is ready to sign agreements. He said once the agreements are signed, halted loan-funded projects can resume. Sri Lanka has bilateral debt with Paris Club creditors, India and China. The minister also added that projects, including the airport, highways and digital television, can resume after the agreements are signed. Three milestones in Indo-Sri Lanka relations were achieved during the visit of Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar to Sri Lanka. President Ranil Vikramasinghe and the visiting Indian External Affairs Minister have jointly unveiled the virtual plaque for 106 houses in Kandy, Nuralia and Matale under the Indian Housing Project. 24 houses in each model village in Colombo and Trincomalee were also handed over virtually. Meanwhile, the Indian Foreign Minister and the Sri Lankan President also unveiled the virtual plaque to mark the formal commissioning of the Maritime Rescue Coordination Centre, or MRCC, in Sri Lanka, under a US$6 million US dollar grant from India. This includes a centre at Navy headquarters in Colombo, a sub-centre in Hambantota, and unmanned installations at Gaul, Arugambe, Batiklo, Trincomalee, Kalarava, Point Pedro and Molikulam. Jai Shankar, who arrived in the island this morning for an official visit, called on President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the President's house earlier today and had engaged in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the head of state. Sri Lanka and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will sign a Memorandum of Understanding for Cooperation in Promoting Direct Investment. Cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandula Gunawardena said both sides reached an agreement during the special meeting of the World Economic Forum held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The agreement aims to attract direct investment to the country and improve the investment environment of both countries through policy and legal reforms, provisions of advanced and integrated infrastructure and process redesign. The minister said Sri Lanka lagged behind regional nations in attracting foreign direct investment, adding further that compared to Singapore, which last year attracted FDIs of $140 billion, India $70 billion, Vietnam $28 billion and Thailand with $20 billion, Sri Lanka Lanka only attracted $1 billion. The minister said the government hopes for foreign investments in a big way to solve our balance deficit crisis. State Minister of Finance Shehan Seymour Singh stated that Sri Lanka's experience demonstrates that effective debt management is not just about managing numbers but also about building robust institutions and capacities. He made this remark while speaking on the role of debt management in navigating crises at the 14th Debt Management Facility Stakeholders Forum held in Livingstone, Zambia. Posting on X, the finance state minister said that he shared the experiences of Sri Lanka which can provide valuable lessons for others and explore the critical elements of capacity building and sound institutional practices in managing debt, particularly in the context of economic challenges. Furthermore, he has stated during the forum that this journey underscores the importance of transparent, accountable governance and the need for international support and cooperation in times of crisis. He added Sri Lanka prioritized addressing gaps in public debt management by drafting a consolidated Public Debt Management Act, ensuring clarity and legal robustness and establishing a central public debt management office with operational autonomy. Moreover, Seema Singer has also expressed that the role of debt management in navigating crises is multifaceted and critical, adding that by investing in capacity building, adhering to sound institutional practices and strategically managing debt restructuring 
banking and liability operations, countries can better withstand economic shocks and pave the way for sustainable recovery. Secretary to the Highways Ranjit Subhasinghe told the Parliament's Committee on Public Enterprises that cashiers at Sri Lanka's expressways are estimated to be stealing up to 20% of fees. Members of the committee said highway tolls of the Road Development Authority had surged on the day when the military had operated the booths during a strike by cashiers, raising questions about the collections on the other days. Members of the committee said highway tolls of the Road Development Authority had surged on the day when the military had operated the booths during a strike by cashiers, raising questions about the collections on other days. An RDA official said 19 cashiers have so far been identified, but there were not enough cashiers to run the toll booths, so they have not been interdicted. The representative of the Auditor General's office questioned how officers who have been found to have committed fraud remain in the public service. RDA officials said there was a shortage of cashiers, but some who were placed in offices as management assistants and sought an order from the COPE to direct them to be placed as cashiers. There was also a move to hire persons on service contracts until an electronic toll system comes online next year and place them on the entry booths and not exits. Mr. David Sislin is the World Bank's new country director for Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka, effective from the 1st of July. Mr. Sislin succeeds Mr. Faris Haddad Zervos, who will be taking on a new World Bank assignment. Mr. Sislin, a dual national of the U.S. and Italy, joined the bank in 2001 as an economist in the Urban Cluster Unit and has since held various operational and managerial positions in different regions. His most recent assignment is as Practice Manager for Urban Disaster Risk Management and Land in the Latin America and Caribbean region, based in Washington, D.C. Mr. Sislin will oversee the World Bank portfolio in Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka of around $4.8 billion. He said he is looking forward to his new role and meeting with key stakeholders and partners very soon. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. We have made it to the end of the current financial week and the Colombo Stock Exchange is deviating from the red trend we saw set over the past few days as the ASPI and S&P SL20 close with gains. To get an update on the green numbers, here we have Mathuria Saunarajan from Capital Alliance Partners. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session brought on by the strengthened sentiment among market participants. The market ended at 12,249.06 points, marking a 23.11 point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 2 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 11.29 points to end the day at 3,616 points. Notable institutional engagement was uh, observed across various sectors, with significant turnover and crossings recorded in John Kills Holdings, Melster Corp PLC, Commercial Bank PLC. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing non voting UB Finance, Industrial Asphalt, Macwoods Energy and Hikado Beach Resort. The top five losers for the day were Royal Palms Beach Hotel, Mula and Phipps PLC, Radiant Gems International, Ceylon Beverage Holdings and Singer Hospitals PLC. It's time for a roundup on the market for this week. Now, despite the sluggish trade over the past few sessions, the turnover seems to be picking up. For a rundown on how the market performed, here is Ranjan Ranathunga from First Capital Holdings. Amid a short trading week, the Columbus stock market displayed mixed sentiment closing the all-share price index at 12,249.06, marking a decline of 62 points or 0.5% from the previous week's close of 12,310.83. The week started on a bearish note, extending uncertainties from the previous week as investor confidence remained cautious amidst ongoing external debt restructuring. However, as the week progressed, 
increase participation from high net worth and institutional investors turned sentiment around ending the week on a positive note following five consecutive days of losses despite the prevailing bearish sentiment market turnover remains strong averaging lca 2.2 billion during the week up by 8% compared to the previous week driven largely by off-board transactions significant investor interest was notably observed in the banking sector with the bargain hunting export oriented companies such as Haley's PLC as well as apparel counters like TJ Lanka and Haley's Fabric provided substantial support to the index throughout the week key sectors dominating turnover throughout the week included capital goods banking and apparel sectors foreign investor activity was notable with net foreign outflows totaling LCR 178 million driven by foreign selling of LCAD 1.7 billion and foreign buying of LCAD 1.5 billion. Notable foreign investor movement included substantial buying in John Kills Holdings, partially offset by significant outflows in ambient capital amounting to LCAD 1.3 billion. Gold prices are trading sideways after early gains fizzled due to the subdued trading session coinciding with a U.S. bank holiday. Spot Gold is trading at $2,329.67, up by $0.09. The yellow metal initially responded positive to, to lackluster U.S. economic data, with retail sales barely rising in May, fueling expectations for a Federal Reserve rate cut in September. This pushed the odds of a cut to 67% from 61% a day earlier. Oil prices were a little changed today, with Brent crude futures hovering slightly below seven-week highs. Brent crude rose $0.06 cents to $85.13 per barrel. Meanwhile, West Texas Intermediate crude futures dipped $0.15 cents to $81.42 per barrel. The Sri Lankan rupee has reached the 300 rupee mark against the US dollar at some commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. According to the People's Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have increased from 299 rupees and 35 cents to 300 rupees and 3 cents, and from 309 rupees and 48 cents to 310 rupees and 19 cents, respectively. A commercial bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased from 299 rupees and 6 cents to 299 rupees and 31 cents, while the selling rate has increased from 309 rupees and 25 cents to 309 rupees and 50 cents. Now let's observe how the rupee behaved against the other global currencies. Take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. HMB PLC was recently honored with the Best Automobile Financing in Asia Pacific Awards at the prestigious Asian Bank and Global Excellence in Retail Financial Services Awards 2024 for its unwavering commitment to seamless facilitation of vehicle ownership nationwide. Notably, HMB was recognized for its significant support to grassroots communities through value-added leasing agreements with partners such as Browns, Demo, Haley's, Lanka Commercial Trading, Singer, AMW and Agstar agribusinesses, empowering the farming community and enabling them to achieve results with minimal financial strain. Hosted by the prestigious Asian Banker magazine, the awards are considered among the most prestigious in the banking sector. HNB Head of Personal Financial Services, 
said they put immense thought into their leasing products, always striving to uphold their mission of empowering the Sri Lankan community. Through programs like HNB Leasing Govisavia and Easy Draft, the bank aims to alleviate many of the stressful factors that hinder the workforce from reaching their full potential and strive to reignite the Sri Lankan economy and support communities in every way possible. One such initiative is HNB's Govisavia, spearheaded by the bank's microfinance offices and bolstered by key players in the agricultural sector. Through these collaborations, farmers will gain access to convenient leasing solutions. Ninety nine X, a global product engineering company, hosted a high profile roundtable discussion titled Poise for Growth in Europe and Americas in Colombo today. The event brought together 99X's industry leaders from Norway, Portugal, Brazil and Sri Lanka to discuss 99X's growth as a forward-thinking global technology leader. The event provided a platform to discuss collaborative efforts within the 99X group with a focus on expanding geographic reach, enhancing service breadth and leveraging global talent to drive innovation and customer satisfaction. Additionally, the discussions highlighted the rapid growth 99X has experienced following substantial investments in innovative strategies. These investments have not only attracted foreign capital to the country, but also positioned 99X as a company committed to acquisition-led growth. During the discussion, Hasit Yaghavita, CEO of 99X Technology, highlighted the company's ongoing investment in Sri Lanka, emphasizing the depth of talent and skills available in the region. Odsver Ostil, Group CEO of 99X Group, reflected on the company's growth trajectory by stating that the 99X Group has grown both in geographical coverage and service offerings over the past few years. The panel discussion further emphasized the integration of talent from global teams, with the 99X Group aiming to expand its presence from Scandinavia throughout Europe and the Americas. This visit particularly focused on exploring potential collaborations to invest in and scale operations in Sri Lanka leveraging the depth of local talent and skills. Additionally, future collaboration opportunities in sales and solution building were explored. The online shopping platform for locally produced goods, SilonPlaza.com, was launched by President Ranil Wickremesinghe at the opening of the International Industry Expo 2024 at BMICH. The exhibition organized by the Industry Development Board under the guidance of the Ministry of Industries and Health Minister Dr. Ramesh Pathirina will be held until the 23rd of June. The event consists of 1,307 booths and it is special that a separate premises as a green industrial zone has been added to the exhibition for the first time. An experimental academic conference on green industrialization will also be held during the exhibition. The president said that an economic commission will be created to carry forward business activities more smoothly. In addition, a new institution named Enterprise Sri Lanka will be established to strengthen small and medium-scale entrepreneurs. Vikramasinghe said there are discussions on establishing a development bank to provide the necessary funds for entrepreneurs. International industrial entrepreneurs representing various countries, as well as local, large-scale and medium-scale industrialists, are participating in this event, and the platform is expected to have a positive inflow of activity soon. Sri Lanka's UB Finance Company Limited, a licensed non-bank lender, said its rights issue has been oversubscribed. The company announced in March it would issue up to 423,798,049 ordinary voting shares at two ordinary voting shares for every 13 ordinary voting shares at 60 cents a share. UB Finance said in a stock exchange filing that the company has applications for 5,728,992 shares on the above rights issue. Accordingly, the rights issue has been oversubscribed. It is said earlier that the company expects to use the proceeds from the right issue to expand the loans and advances portfolio. Colombo-based Union Bank owns a majority of UB Finance's voting stock. The current stated capital of the entity is 3 billion rupees. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, in collaboration with the International Labour Organization, announced the launch of SPARK, a national youth entrepreneurship competition for Sri Lankan's next generation of entrepreneurs. 
Spark aims to ignite the entrepreneurial spirit among young innovators, disruptors, thinkers, problem solvers and creators between the ages of 15 and 24. The competition offers an unparalleled opportunity for aspiring youth entrepreneurs to pitch their innovative ideas and entrepreneurial solutions to the most pressing challenges of our time. Successful participants will gain the necessary support, mentorship, recognition and resources to get started on their entrepreneurial journey and transform it into successful ventures. The competition is a flagship initiative of the International Labour Organization's South Asia Leadership in Entrepreneurship program, of which the Silong Chamber is the implementing partner. Through strategic interventions such as Spark, ILO's SAIL program, funded by the U.S. Department of State, is endeavouring to boost young people's transition into the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial world and create a shift in the entrepreneurial ecosystems. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian stocks mostly fell in thin trading after US markets were closed Wednesday in observance of Juneteenth. Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index edged 0.1% higher to 38,324.10. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong shed 0.5% to 18,336.76. The ASX index fell 0.1%, finishing at 7,762.1 points. And the Shanghai Composite Index dropped 0.3% to 3,009.72. China's 50-year ultra-long special treasury bonds made their debut on the Shanghai and Shenzhen stock exchanges to facilitate investor transactions and improve the liquidity of the country's bond market. The bonds were issued at the Beijing Stock Exchange with a total sum of 35 billion yuan at an interest rate of 2.53%. According to Industrial Insiders, individual investors can invest in the 50-year ultra-long special treasury bonds through both banks and securities companies after their debuts on these two bourses in Shanghai and Shenzhen. According to a plan of the Minister of Finance in China, a total of 22 batches of ultra-long special treasury bonds will be issued this year, with the last batch expected to be completed by mid-November. The issuance of the 50-year ultra-long special treasury bonds can provide stable financial support for the implementation of major national strategies in the long term and is of great significance in improving bond supply and promoting the balance of supply and demand in the bond market. Well, that concludes today's Nile Business Report. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Have a good night.